Good morning and welcome to Word of Faith Radio. If you're joining us today for the very first time, we would like to let you know that Word of Faith Radio is a media outreach of Brent Whetstone Ministries. We'd like to remind you that you can go ahead and chat with us today via the Spreaker app or visiting the Spreaker website. If you're listening in for the first time today, we'd like to invite you to visit our website at www.brentw.org. Also, we're excited to announce that Brent and Whetstone Ministries now offers a text giving option. From your phone, you simply have to text the gift of any amount to brentwmin at mogive.com. For example, if you'd like to give $15 today, just text the number 15 to B-R-E-N-T-W-M-I-N at M-O-G-I-V dot com. If this is your first time giving by text, just follow the simple instructions that they'll walk you through. It's just a registration process by our trusted giving partner, MoGiv. After that, you will be able to support Brent Whetstone Ministries anytime you'd like right from your phone. Now today we're going to be covering a very important topic. Uh, This entire month actually we'll be going through a series called The Kingdom of the Cults. And we're going to take a look at some of the world's fastest growing cults. Today we're going to take a look at the cult of Scientology. But first I would like to go over what exactly is the characteristics that we use to define what a cult is. And we got these um, this list here from the Christian Research Institute and um, Hank Hanegraaff, the Bible Answer Man. Now, if you've listened to my program in the past, you know that I don't see eye to eye on a lot of stuff with Hank Hanegraaff or that the Christian Research Institute puts out. However... I live by the philosophy, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. And if they have good information, it's good to use that information and get that information out there. And this is one of those things that I I do agree with Hank Hanegraaff on. Um, So let's go over what are the common characteristics of cults. And if you would like to see these for yourself, read over them, you can visit our Facebook page which is just simply facebook.com slash Brent W. Min. And we have those posted there right now, um, if you would like to read over those, as well as a link to the Christian Research Institute if you wanted to check out anything else that they have on the subject of cults. So what are some of the characteristics of a cult? Well, scripture twisting is one of the main and what they say is the first mark of a cult. And it's manipulating scripture. It says the Bible is twisted to fit the leader or group's interpretation. Private interpretations are forbidden because the leader of the cult is the only one who is able to understand God's voice properly. Their teachings distort the historic orthodox claim of Christianity. Another characteristic of a cult is mental manipulation. Many times, cults manipulate people's minds. This is, there's little concern for individual thought and development. Education is usually discouraged while the convert is bombarded with the cult's doctrine and literature. Members are called to leave or neglect their old family and lifestyle for a brand new one. Time manipulation is the third characteristic. Since salvation comes exclusively from the teachings of the group, In many cults, members spend much of their time working for the organization. Family, school, leisure, sleep, and even food are most often neglected. Finally, cults typically manipulate reality. They tend to have an exclusive us-versus-them mentality in which society and old associates are all out to get them. Anyone outside the group is suspect. Now, the cult that we're going to be talking about today, Scientology, give you a little bit of my background with Scientology. If you listen to my faith series, you'll know that there was a period in my Christian walk where I actually left the church. 
And when I <clears throat> left the church and turned my back on God, the church that I went after to after actually was the Church of Scientology. And I spent two years working for the Church of Scientology in the capacity of a bookstore officer and as chaplain of the Cleveland Mission of the Church of Scientology. And knowing what the characteristics of a cult are now, it's so easy to look back and see that they do every single one of these, with the exception of scripture twisting, because they don't believe in the Christian God, they don't believe in the Christian Bible. However, the mental ma manipulation, the time manipulation, and the manipulating of reality were all present um, within that cult. So, let me give you a little bit of a background on the Church of Scientology. The Church of Scientology was founded kinda in the 1950s with the publication of Dianetics, the Modern Science of Mental Health. It wasn't officially a religion in the 1950s. Um, it was more of a pseudoscience that was going around certain circles of the time. And they were using the book Dianetics, the Modern Science of Mental Health, as their, their scriptures, what they would get together and meet on. And what Dianetics focuses on is a pseudo-psychology kind of science where they perform what is called Dianetics auditing on individuals. And through a Dianetics auditing session, what would happen is they would ask you about uh, hurtful times in your life, and they would have you talk about those times, going over it as you're in the, the, in the case that you're living it currently. So, if you got bit by a dog 10 years ago, they're going to walk you through that, but you're going to walk them through it like it's happening right here and now. And they're going to have you go over that over and over again until they feel that you've actually got over the hurt that's associated with that, got over the pain that's associated with that. It deals with engrams or memory cells, and they believe that they're clearing those engrams um, from your your mind and your soul. Scientology is very big on the spirit. They believe that we are all spirit beings, but where they differ from Christianity and really any other religion that's out there that believes that we are spirits is their, their belief on how our spirits got here to the planet Earth. And I'll get to that um, a little bit later on in the broadcast but I want to continue on with a little bit of the background of the Church of Scientology. Um, it actually became a church in 1952. So two years after the publication of Dianetics, Scientology became a religion. Um, it was founded by a pulp fiction writer by the name of L. Ron Hubbard. Now, L. Ron Hubbard has an interesting background. If you look up his background on the Internet, you're going to get two versions of who L. Ron Hubbard is. You're going to get the official church version, and you're going to get the actual version of what L. Ron Hubbard is. The church version paints L. Ron Hubbard as a genius, as a man who could accomplish just about anything. They have him being the youngest Eagle Scout on record, but the Boy Scouts didn't keep records of who was an Eagle Scout back in the time that L. Ron Hubbard was an Eagle Scout, or what age the Eagle Scouts were, I'm sorry. Um, they have him as um, studying engineering. Well, he took one class in engineering and he actually failed it. So to label him as an engineer would be like labeling me as a history teacher because I took three history courses in college. So Scientology does a very good job of shaping the image of their founder to be what they want it to be. However, if you do a little bit of research into L. Ron Hubbard, you're going to see the kind of person that he actually was. And in 1986, he died. The church's account of his death is that he chose to leave his body behind here on earth and left as a spirit being out into the cosmos and is on another planet right now studying and teaching Scientology. Well, we know that, that that's bunk. When you die, 
you die. And you either go to heaven or hell. And knowing that L. Ron Hubbard was not a Christian, we know that he's in hell right now. Um, he's not out in some other planet teaching Scientology or studying more levels of Scientology. He's dead. And unfortunately, because he was not saved, he's suffering in hell right now. Um, the current leader of the Church of Scientology is a man by the name of David Miscavige, who has done a really good job, in my opinion, of shaping the image of what Scientology is and getting Scientology out there to people. You'll notice a couple years back that there were some Scientology commercials running uh, during the Super Bowl, around the time of the Super Bowl. You type in the word Scientology in Google, and you are going to get all the official church posts first before you actually get into any of the distractors or um, people who are against the Church of Scientology. Now, in Scientology, I said one of the main principles of Scientology is what's called auditing. There are two kinds of auditing. There's Dianetics auditing and there's Scientology auditing. In Dianetics auditing, it seems pretty harmless. You actually sit across the, the desk from someone who just asks you questions about, like I said earlier, in Scientology auditing, that's where they have something that's called an e-meter. A machine that's right in front of you. Your hands are connected to what look like soup cans, and they ask you questions. What those soup cans are doing, they're basically... Questions that they ask you are um, pretty personal questions. They'll ask you about your marriage. They'll ask you about your sex life. They'll ask you about things that are really none of their business. But what they're doing is they're gathering personal information on you in case at any time you're going to detract from the church and you're going to start speaking out against the church. Now, luckily, one of the things that I never did was Scientology auditing. I kind of didn't feel comfortable going in there and telling them personal things that were going on in my life. Plus, I did a little bit of research while I was in the Church of Scientology and found out that this is the kind of stuff that they do. Now, the route to salvation in Scientology is completely different from what we preach in the church. You're not saved by grace through faith. You're saved basically through works. And we know that you can't be saved through works no matter what religion you're part of. You're not going to be saved through, through works. You're going to be saved through faith in Jesus Christ. So what Scientology has is they have what's called the Bridge of Total Freedom. And what the Bridge of Total Freedom does is it lays out a map of salvation for you, the route that you need to go. And on the bridge to total freedom, there are two sides. There's the training side, where you actually become a student of Scientology, and you study the doctrines and the practices of Scientology, and you become a minister within the Church of Scientology, whether it's a chaplain or an auditor. Or there's the what they call the processing side of the bridge of total freedom, where you're just a practitioner or a parishioner of the Church of Scientology. Now, conservative estimates of how much it costs to be saved in the Church of Scientology, because you do have to pay for your services in the church, is about $250 up to a million dollars to obtain salvation through their church. To go up into the salvation through Scientology, what you have to do 
is you have to get so much auditing until you become what's called a clear. Once you become a clear, that means that you've gotten rid of all the hurt in your current life and you're able to move on into OT levels or operating saint levels where they deal with hurt in your past lives because Scientology believes that we are spiritual beings who have lived before for billions and billions of years and they um, through their auditing they're able to clear all the past hurt that you've had all the negative experiences that you've had back for billions and billions and billions of years and that's what they do through their auditing now the most interesting level out of those OT levels because currently you can go from clear to OT8 and that's the highest level released see the church releases these levels um, when certain milestones are reached in the church. There are supposedly a total of 15 OT levels, but the church has only accomplished the certain milestones to make it to release OT8. Now, OT3 is an interesting one because that's where they deal with the history of Scientology. And the history of Scientology is interesting because they believe that billions and billions of years ago, that there was basically a Star Wars where a galactic warlord by the name of Xenu went around to different planets and gathered up people and enslaved them. And what he did was he brought those people here to Earth, dropped them into volcanoes, and then blew up the volcanoes to kill all the people. Now we know that's not true, but that is released at OT3 in Scientology, probably about by the time you've spent $100,000, maybe more, in the church. So they figure that you're pretty well invested at this point, that you're not going to back out when you hear crazy things like that. Um, the current church membership statistics, the church puts it at 8 million people in the world. Um, Actual statistics put it at about 25,000 members in the U.S. and about 25,000 people in um, other parts of the world. So there are actually probably about 50,000 Scientologists compared to the 8 million that the church is claiming. Um, now, so how, how does this make Scientology a cult? Well, I'm going to talk about my personal experiences within the church. First of all, uh, mental manipulation is very big in the church. They actually discourage you from sending your children to public school, and instead of sending them to public school, homeschool them with Scientology materials uh, that they have available to teach children with. So they want you to start teaching your children at a very young age these principles of Scientology. Time manipulation is another huge one. I remember there was a time that I was going up to Cleveland to visit the zoo with my family, and I happened to stop by the mission, and I went in to just check in and say hi, and they guilted me into staying at the church while my wife took my children to the zoo without me because they said that the, the work of the church was much more important than me spending time with my family because we never know when someone's going to die without the knowledge of Scientology. So they guilted me in to doing the work of the church over spending time with my family. And they're very big on manipulating reality because Scientology has a very big us versus them attitude. They think that everyone is out to destroy Scientology, that the government is spying on them. As a matter of fact, when you get into the higher levels of Scientology, Remember I was talking about that e-meter where they hook you up? It's kind of like the lie detectors test. Well, they hook you up to that, and they go through what's called a security check. And they'll ask you questions about if you have any contact with the press, if you have any contact with the government, if you are there to spy on them. Because, like I said, that's a lie detector test. 
So they're trying to find out what your actual motives are there, and they'll, they'll randomly do this to people to see if they're there as spies. L. Ron Hubbard was a very paranoid about stuff, so much so that at one point he created an entire fleet of ships that sailed out in the ocean, and that's where they did a lot of research for Scientology. One, it was to avoid government prosecution, but two, it was because they were afraid people were spying on them, and their only safe way was to be out in the ocean where they couldn't be followed by people, they couldn't be spied on by people, even so much so to the point today that the highest levels of Scientology are delivered on their boat. They actually have a cruise ship that they own that's called the Free Winds. That, that is the only place that you can get these high levels of Scientology. They say it's to take you away from the distractions of the everyday world. However, it's because they are so paranoid still and they have that us versus them attitude that they feel that it's a lot safer on the boat. Now, Scientology also uses fear and hard labor as a form of punishment and control. They have a program called Rehabilitation Project Force that ministers and members of Scientology are forced to go through if they break certain aspects of the church or if they're talking negative about the church or if they're looking at websites that they shouldn't look at that are negative towards the church. And what that is, that's hard labor where they'll put you to work scrubbing floors with a toothbrush. There's a, a really good book that talks about uh, what what this uh, uh, Rehabilitation Project Force is, is like, and it's called Blown for Good Behind the Iron Curtain of Scientology. It's by a Scientologist who was in a lot longer than I was, and that was higher up in the church than I ever was. His name is Mark Headley. I'm actually going to post a link to that right now to our Facebook page, and then I'll send a link out on Twitter as well. I encourage you, if you want to learn more uh, about Scientology than what I'm able to tell you in this half-hour program, pick up that book and read it. Um, he gives very good accounts of what it's like to be within the church as uh a, a high up official, but then he also shows what it's like to leave the church, especially when you're married. So many couples are stuck in the Scientology because they're married, and if they were to leave, what could happen to them and their uh, spouse, their children? And I haven't even scratched the surface of what Scientology is or what they do, but that, that book will would be a great, if you want to learn more about Scientology, I highly recommend that book. I've read it through a couple of times, and it it is phenomenal to see what these people do to families and what they do to detractors from the church. Also, I want to give a plug for a website that's really good that has a lot of information. It's xscientologykids.com. It, it's a way... Uh, that people who used to be in Scientology have connected in an internet forum and they tell their stories on there. You're able to contact them and they, they can help you. If you know someone who's in the Church of Scientology, they'll help you get them out. Now, Scientology also has another uh, policy that they use as control and that's called the pol policy of disconnect. And that is, if you are a family within the church and your husband starts speaking out against the church, you are no longer allowed to have contact with that individual. So they threaten separations within the family structure and the family unit, that, um, and they use that as a form of control. So Scientology is a very dangerous cult. They're very good at recruiting people into the church. And one of the things that they do is they they just redid these courses. They call them the personal efficiency courses. And they deal with anything from finances to raising children to dealing with issues in marriage. So they go after people um, 
who are hurting and have a blank in their life or have questions and are seeking certain things and they're using it like who who isn't having financial issues in the current financial climate in the country right now so they're going heavily after people like that well we know people who have financial issues sometimes have marital issues too because the number one thing that spouses fight about is money so now they're going to get you with this course and they get you in with these cheap little fifty dollar courses that seem to make a lot of sense and don't seem to be bad at all but once they start indoctrinating you and they get you in they hook you and it's scary what they do to you and they're able to do through their manipulation so if you're looking into Scientology if you know anyone who's involved in Scientology I encourage you to get them out Google Scientology escaping or escaping Scientology on Google and there are resources available that'll help you read that book blown for good behind the Iron Curtain of Scientology. Learn how they escaped, but get your loved one out because it's going to do nothing but financially bankrupt and destroy your loved one. I'd like to play for you the creed of the Church of Scientology. They, um, they make themselves sound very innocent, but I think if you you know what the Scientology doctrines are listening to this creed it completely has a double meaning so let me go ahead and play that for you we of the church believe that all men of whatever race color or creed were created with equal rights that all men have inalienable rights to their own religious practices and their performance that all men have inalienable rights to their own lives. That all men have inalienable rights to their sanity. That all men have inalienable rights to their own defense. That all men have inalienable rights to conceive, choose, assist, or support their own organizations, churches, and governments. That all men have inalienable rights to think freely, to talk freely, to write freely their own opinions and to counter or utter or write upon the opinions of others. That all men have inalienable rights to the creation of their own kind. That the souls of men have the rights of men. That the study of the mind and the healing of mentally caused ills should not be alienated from religion or condoned in non-religious fields. And that no agency less than God has the power to suspend or set aside these rights, overtly or covertly. And we of the church believe that man is basically good, that he is seeking to survive, that his survival depends upon himself and upon his fellows and his attainment of brotherhood with the universe. And we of the church believe that the laws of God forbid man to destroy his own kind to destroy the sanity of another, to destroy or enslave another's soul, to destroy or reduce the survival of one's companions or one's group. And we of the church believe that the spirit can be saved and that the spirit alone may save or heal the body. So we see there several different things. They believe that man is basically good. Well, we know through the Bible that man is not good. We're all born into a sin nature, and that because of that sin nature, the only way to be redeemed is through the salvation of Jesus Christ. However, they teach that we're born good, that we're basically good, and that through their courses, they're going to make you better. Um, they're very big on what they call human rights. However, they're some of the biggest human rights violators in the world. They control their religious people. Um, their ministers are part of a group called the Sea Organization. And they control these people like no other. I have several friends who are in the Sea Organization. And the control that they practice over these people, it's terrifying. 
Um, I think the, the title of that book is so appropriate, Behind the Iron Curtain of Scientology, because we know that the Iron Curtain is what we used to call the Soviet Union, and the Soviet Union was very big on control of everything. Well, this is like the modern-day Soviet Union, but in the religious world. Um, like I said, I've only scratched the surface of what Scientology is. I could devote an entire 15 to 20-hour series on what their teachings and beliefs are, but I wanted to give you a highlight of what they believed, what made it a cult. If you have any questions about Scientology or the cult practices within Scientology, feel free to email us at info at brentw.org. I will get back to you. I'll answer the questions that you have. Um, visit our website when you have time. Uh, to listen to the program again and catch anything that you haven't missed. And at this time, I would like to give the opportunity for anyone who may not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, for the Scientology people who are going to be listening in to this, to take that step of faith that actually secures your eternity in a place called heaven. It's a simple thing. It's not based on works, and it's absolutely free. Our debt was sin, and we could never pay that. But Jesus came, and he paid that debt for us. In Scientology, you have to pay for your salvation. But the great thing about Christianity, the great thing about it is the fact that we couldn't afford to pay what we needed to pay in order to be redeemed from the sin that we all have in our lives. So Jesus came and he paid that debt for us. Your freedom is paid for, for all eternity, by saying a simple prayer and believing it in your heart. It's a prayer that comes from the Bible. The Bible instructs us, all we have to do is believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus died for our sins and will be saved. It doesn't matter what church you belong to, what matters is, is that you've made Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life. So I invite you to do that today. Just repeat after me. Dear God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I admit that I'm not right with you, and I want to be right with you. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. The Bible says if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I will be saved. I believe with my heart, and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.